Hi everybody, we're here, and today I have with me Evo. Evo is a V Planet course and a former V Planet coach and a former UCGO finalist. So, uh, yeah, thank you for being here, Evo. Yeah, hello. Uh, nice to be here. Cool. So today, Evo and I are here to discuss the myth of just learning more and more and more topics. So this video was inspired by a blog I saw on Code Forces um, with a gray coder, which basically means someone with very very new to coding, asking about learning about segment trees. And as you might imagine, segment trees are a very advanced concept. So yeah, Ibo and I wanted to discuss, should you be doing that? Should you not be doing that? First thing is, Ibo, when do you pick to learn a new topic? Yeah, well, as I was going through USCO, um, when I decided that I need to learn a new topic is usually when I encounter a problem um, that I couldn't solve. And then later when I read the solution, I'm like, oh, that's that problem required um, this knowledge, which I didn't have before. And then if this happened like quite a few times, I'm like, okay, it's probably a good idea to learn this topic. Yeah, I think I did that too, where like the first time I read a solution and I had a topic I didn't know, I'm like, you know what? I don't need to know that. I'll uh -huh. just wait. But then it happened several times. So I'm like, all right, I gotta learn this. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, though, the first time I saw the topic, I probably should have just learned it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. Yeah, and I guess I would also add to that, like if you're on Yusuko website, you know your division, right? So you know which topics are within your division. If you're on Code Forces, you don't necessarily know like your division. You might be a brand new coder looking at a very hard problem with segment trees. Um, so I guess how would you how would you avoid being brand new and trying to learn segment trees? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess on. Um Specifically on code forces, um, there's like problem rating. So then if you see how the problem rating is much higher than your division or your rating on code forces, probably a good sign that you're not really expected to get the problem and that it might be using um, algorithms or data structures more advanced than uh, you're ready for. Um, and then, yeah, as you said on Usico, uh, basically you just need to know the topics for your division specifically. Yeah, and what would you define as like much higher on code forces? Um, I would say roughly like more than a thousand above your rating, since the problem rating is slightly inflated compared to uh, CoForce's rating, I think. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I also feel like if you're taking a contest and you're only able to say get Div 2 A and B, um, then maybe go like one problem above, maybe two above, right? So maybe you try C and D. You don't necessarily try. There's a J in that contest. Maybe, maybe hold off on that a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Okay, I guess the, the next thing is like, let's say you're in like silver and gold, right? And you learn the topic. There's about five topics in each division. So you learn the, you learn the topics for your division. What do you do next? Like, what do you, how do you study? Yeah, that's kind of like the hardest part, right? After you like feel like you've learned all the topics and then you still get stuck on each problem and then you read the solution, you're like, well, technically I had the knowledge needed to solve it, uh, but I wasn't able to. Right, so this is something that um, is probably the most challenging part of Yusuko, where you just have to try to improve your problem solving skills. Um, and I think basically the best way and pretty much the only way is to do a lot of problems, except there's, um, I think also um, a lot of ways you can be more productive in when you're solving problems so that you can solve less problems, but improve more. Yeah, definitely, I totally agree. Like idea is not quantity it's it's definitely quality um and we can get into some problem solving strategies in a minute we could also probably make entire videos on that but what thing i kind of want to add and this is kind of like why i thought naming this video like the myth of just learning new um topics is that it's very easy to learn new topics like if i want to learn dykstra's and i didn't know it i could just google you know in max 30 minutes if you could learn that new topic assuming you're looking at the right resources and everything if you're all over the place maybe not but if it's at your level you can learn it in 30 minutes. But what's really difficult is improving your problem solving skills. So like if you're say in silver where Dyke shit doesn't show up and you're getting really stuck, it could just be really easy for you to just learn Dyke and feel like you're getting better. But in reality, you just wasted your time because Dyke is not going to show up on silver division, but your problem solving skills will. Um, I know this one time I got this email from this gold student and the guy was struggling in gold a bit. Uh, and he was asking me about all these different string algorithms like KNP, um, and different stuff like that. And he was asking if I could teach them to him. And I was like, I, I could, but that's not going to help you at all. Mm -hmm. So right. I think there's like, yeah, many parts, right? So the first thing is what you uh, just mentioned that like 
if you learn algorithms that don't show up for the contest you're taking, then it's not that knowledge isn't really going to benefit you. Um, and also another thing I think is when you learn a new algorithm or data structure, um, it's actually quite difficult to try to apply it. So if, even if you've solved the like base version of the problem, um, there will be a lot of twists in the actual useful problems they give you where it might be hard to even like identify that you're supposed to use this algorithm or data structure, even if it does uh, show up sometime. Yeah, and that's definitely where the problem solving skills like come into play. Because mm -hmm. if it was just implement Dijkstra, anyone can, anyone can do that. Right. So I guess earlier you were saying like, make sure you get, solve lesser, like, practice on less problems and get more improvement. How would you do that? Yeah, so I guess now let's go into a little bit of like some problem solving strategies or tips on how to improve. Um, so I would say probably the most important thing is to be hands-on with problems. So don't just sit there and like hope some magical uh, solution comes to you. Actually get like dirty and work on certain test cases, right? Come up with a bunch of test cases on your own and try to find some pattern or solution um, to solve that. And then kind of just repeat that process as you keep iterating through different solutions. Yeah, the, the, the biggest thing that I see people do, which I cannot wrap my head around, is like, they're like, okay, I, I thought about the problem, I couldn't get it. And I was like, okay, so like, when they thought about it, like, what, what did you do? And essentially what I found is that what they did was they just sat there and thought for 15 minutes and they just hoped the solution would come to them. And so like, when in doubt, make sure you're writing stuff down, make sure you're making progress that way, make sure you're writing your ideas down. You don't need to like, write down like an essay about stuff, but just, you know, if you're like working on test cases, like you were saying, write those down, like, yeah, and work things out. Um, so when you're making test cases, I guess the the rule of thumb I always give people is you want to create the biggest test cases you possibly can while still being able to like work with them. And I usually say n equals six or seven. Uh, some problems you can do bigger, some problems you have to do smaller, but like 95% of problems, just create test cases with n equals six or seven, solve it by hand and move on to the, to the next one. Yeah. I'm trying to look for patterns. I think six, six or seven is a pretty good guideline. Uh, and I think another thing, just to add on to that a little bit, is try to make each one of your test cases unique somehow. So let's say you have three test cases and cert, they like test certain scenarios of, um, of whatever problem you have. But then for your like fourth test case, try to come up with like a scenario that the other three test cases don't encounter yet. Yeah, you actually just check them out. I was just about to say the same thing. Um, at first you can start, no, no, it's cool. At first you can start off with like random stuff. And then you want to make sure you like specifically try random, like interesting things. Like, oh, maybe let me try to figure out when the answer is negative only, when the answer doesn't exist. Uh, or one thing I like to do is just power of two, like one, two, four, eight. If they're like a list of numbers, um, of course, different problems will have different types of stuff. But yeah, make sure that they're all different. That's the other thing that like occurs when I see people trying to debug. And I'm like, okay, what test cases did you create when trying to debug? And they send me all basically just random test cases. And it's like, no, we have to get, uh, we have to try to make different test cases that are weird in their own ways. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just revisiting that a little bit. I think another thing is if you come up with certain greedy algorithms, oftentimes one of the hardest thing to know is like, does this greedy algorithm actually work? Um, so another thing I like to do is if I have a greedy algorithm that I'm trying to figure out, is this wrong or not? What I'll actually do is I'll come up with a test case on the fly. So what I mean by that is like um, a greedy algorithm usually acts in steps, right? And, and each time you make some greedy choice and then you never revisit that choice. So maybe on the first or second choice it makes, I'm gonna try to make sure that it's somehow the wrong choice. And I construct the rest of my test case so that the first or second choice it made was wrong. Um, and then oftentimes this will be much faster for coming up with a test case that actually breaks your algorithm than trying a bunch of more or less random test cases. Yeah, I guess I do something a little different, but a little similar too. Um, I try to think of, not just for greedy, for like all problems. Uh, I try to think of, like whenever I have an algorithm for coding it, I think of like, okay, what makes this test case or what does the algorithm work on this test case? Like what specifically makes it work? What about this test case that makes it happen? And I try to think of, okay, can I construct a test case where this particular thing that makes it work is not true uh, within the bounds of the problem? And if so, I do that and break it. Otherwise, we're good. Hopefully, hopefully it works. <laughs> so we were talking about uh, like 
getting in dirty, making sure you're actually like doing stuff. Um, so let's say you do all that. How long should you spend working on a problem before before you decide that you actually can't come up with a solution? Like in practice and in contest, I guess. Yeah. So I think in practice, uh, it really depends on the problem. Like I think you should obviously keep trying as long as you think you're making progress. Uh, but then at some point, if you get stuck, like completely stuck and feel like you haven't made any progress for, I'd say 15 or 30 minutes, um, that's usually the point where I would like um, get more help other than just keep on trying it on my own. Yeah, I'd say about the same for me. Um, like there's no like time limit, but like once I make no progress for, I'd say 15 minutes when I do it, mm -hmm. uh, but personal preference, I guess, um, check the solution. But then when I do so, I only get like the next hint. So especially when I read the solution, I probably got like the first, you know, some prefix of it. And then I read the next hint to get one more piece of information. And then I go back and repeat. I go back and say like, okay, try it again. And then when I get 15 minutes of no new process, I go back and get a hint again. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but what would you do in the case where you start reading the solution and it's just completely different from what you had like come up with so far? Oh, then I just get like annoyed and I read the whole solution. Okay. <laughs> Um, I guess it's another thing, right? When you're first starting a problem, how much do you spend brainstorming and how much do you spend just like going down one, one path? Yeah, I think against this depends a lot on the problem. Um, specifically, I would say if it's a problem I'm like quite familiar with, at least the problem type, uh, one very specific example would be like, if I see a DP problem and I instantly recognize it as DP, I'll spend a lot more time going down specific DP states and verifying they completely don't work before trying new states. Uh, but then in more general cases, I mean, I would like to say that I try to branch out and think of possible solutions before thinking on them too much, although that's not always the case. Yeah, I guess for me at the beginning, I try like a few different uh, thoughts and ideas. And if you solve enough problems, you kind of get like an inkling of this one here sort of feels right. Um, mm -hmm. And you go with that. And it's not like always correct, but it usually is, it's on the, it's on the right, it's on the right path. Um, and yeah, I kind of agree for like DP, if you're able to get a DP state that's correct, but too slow, usually the correct answer is to optimize that state somehow. Yeah. And work on it. Uh, well, yeah, I guess let's go into platinum a little more then. So for silver and gold, we said just learn all the topics and like all the five topics. Don't waste your time learning partner topics. For mm -hmm. platinum, that's not necessarily the case because there's just like a million and one topics that could possibly show up in platinum. And it's like, there's some topics that'll show up once every three years right. or something. Mm -hmm. uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on those topics? Yeah, so I mean, when I did USCO, my strategy for platinum was honestly just do a ton of DP because there's usually one DP problem every contest and then just kind of hope I can get the other problem, like one or maybe, yeah, like one other problem, ideally. Um, so I would say in terms of trying to maximize points, um, it's still a good idea to just focus on like the more common graph problems um, and DP. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I completely agree. I remember um, senior year, there was like a couple of contests where I got two problems. And I believe in at least one of those contests, like I got two DP problems solved. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's again, like with problem solving skills, right? It's not just you learn DP once and you can solve any DP problem. It's, it's nothing like that. It's you learn DP and then you got to like spend hours and hours and hours improving your uh, DP skills. So like, or your problem solving skills so you can solve harder problems. Um, and yeah, usually, even if you don't know like that full algorithm for those platinum problems, you can get a lot of partial credit from other random stuff that you can that you can do if you have problem solving skills. I guess another thing I would say is you could learn all the topics that could possibly show up in plat, but you would spend because there's just so many of them, you would spend so much time. And I think as we've kind of said, like that time is a lot better spent uh, working on problem solving skills and improving those. Yeah. So yeah, learn, learn, learn the main data structures, learn the main algorithms, but the, these ones that just show up once in a blue moon, don't bother. Yeah. Well, I guess one more thing I'd also add for plat is that for like silver and gold, problems are basically roughly within the same division. 
for plot, they very, very much in difficulty. Mm. Um, so maybe necessarily like, just because you're in platinum division doesn't necessarily mean you should be attempting the problems or even the IOI competitors that you were not able to solve them. When you get better, sure. Uh, but when you're just in plot, maybe work on the easier ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess regarding um, the current state of silver and gold, though, where they're kind of bringing in a lot of potentially harder uh, algorithms and data structures. For example, in the most recent contest, we got a meet in the middle problem in silver. Um, it is pretty much always possible to advance from the contest just using the like main algorithms and data structures. So let's say you take the most recent silver contest as the example, even if you like didn't know um, meet in the middle, like most people didn't, um, and you only get the first few partials with a brute force, it's still possible to advance if you got the other two problems. So it's not like not knowing these newer algorithms or data structures that pop up once in a blue moon will completely stop you from advancing. Um, and as Rhea said, you can also try the next contest as well if it didn't work out. Yeah, I just look at the cutoff. It's 650, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which means you don't even need a full two problems, like just one and some partials would do it. So I guess essentially the idea is you don't know it, but no one else does either. So it's uh, reflected in the cutoff. And also there's no way to predict that meat in the middle would just show up in this contest, right? Mm -hmm. There's no, because it's never shown up in like gold or platinum either, or like if it has maybe like really rarely, but I haven't seen it in gold or platinum. And mm -hmm. I've looked through all the problems here. There's no way to predict that that's something that would show up. So if it does, you know, just focus on the other ones and you'll be okay. And there's next contest after that. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to really like prepare for it, right? Because instead of me in the middle, it could have been like one of the other, I don't know, hun hundreds or at least like dozens uh, rare niche algorithms or data structures that could have popped up. Yeah, and I will add that there actually is a way to prepare for that. You could uh -huh. just learn problem solving skills. And then you might think right. like, oh, instead of just going from one direction, we can go from both directions and meet in the middle, make it a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think this about covers it for, we went a little bit off topic for why uh, learning topics is just a complete myth, but I think we liked a lot of good problem solving skills stuff. And yeah, is there anything more you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think that about does it. Cool. Well, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.